So, Cynthia. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Elena Mengotti, the head of unit for you project for Friuli Venezia Giulia Region Department for Culture. Uh, I'm uh, very thankful to Cinzia La Gioia and to Puglia Creativa for organizing this series of four workshops uh, exploring the role of uh, culture and creative industries uh, in the view of uh, urban transformation. Uh, these workshops are organized, as Cinzia said, in the frame of a Chimera Plus project, which is a project financed by Interreg Med program. Uh, we are capitalizing the results of another European project, which was called Chimera. Chimera focused on the role of uh, culture and creativity uh, for the economic development of our partner regions. With Chimera Plus, we would like to exploit the results of Chimera project and uh, uh, support the role of culture and creative industries for uh, new uh, urban sustainability. Our partners uh, are uh, um, Creative Apulia Cluster, uh, and then we have the Sarajevo Economic Regional Development Agency from Bosnia and Herzegovina, the Municipality of Nova Gorica from Slovenia, and the Government of Aragon from Saragossa, Spain. And then we have several associated partners that are quite important for us, uh, both from Chimera Project and from other territories, such as the municipality of Gorizia, for instance, that uh, are working with us and are following our activities. But uh, now I will leave the floor to Cinzia to present uh, the work of today. Uh, so have a good afternoon with us. Thank you. Well, thank you, Elena. Before to start some uh, communication, we are going to record the, the workshop. So please switch off your camera if you prefer. And then another communication. At the end of the presentation, we will have 10 minutes for question and answer. So please, if you want to address a question to the speaker, write it on chat and then we uh, will discuss. Now, uh, let me introduce the topic of the workshop. Uh, this is the last of three workshop in which we are investigating what is, uh, what is the role of cultural and creative enterprises in urban revitalization process. In the previous workshop, we uh, addressed the question, if the cultural and creative operators are generators of innovation, activating virtuous processes of community building, for example. But also another question that we addressed uh, was why use the cultural and creative industry in urban revitalization? We involve the best practice, uh, um, innovative actions that given evidence to the uh, strategic role of cultural and creative enterprise. We understood that uh, uh, we understood that uh, uh, cultural heritage and the creative industry can raise awareness and change perception of places in a way that improvement to infrastructure or the built environment alone will not do. Cultural and creative revitalization is not just an end result, but a process that continues evolving over time. And then another important issue is that the cities in this moment have a great opportunity to address strategic action plans uh, and the funds of next generation European Union to integrate cultural and creative development within wider urban sustainability uh, effort. Today, we want to complete this part by analyzing another point of view highlighting how to do. So we are going to analyze the European program er, or other uh, opportunities devoted to support cities and the territory in activating process that put culture and creativity, beauty at the center of development strategies. 
As you know, this topic is uh, a priority in the agenda of the uh, European um, Union Commission, that through the new European Bauhaus Initiative, want to connect the European Green Deal to our daily lives and living spaces. By creating bridge between uh, different back background, cutting uh, across uh, discipline and uh, building on participation at all levels, the new European Bauhaus inspires a movement to, to, say, to, uh, to transform our society along three value, strategic value, sustainability, aesthetic, and inclusion. We are living in a moment, terrible moment in this, in this day, but in general, we could say that we are living in a, a moment in which digitalization and the green transition pose some of the greatest challenges of our time and uh, can only be tackled in an interdisciplinary manner through collaboration between art, design, and uh, science. So um, a co-creation space where architects, artists, students, engineers, designers work together to match style with sustainability. This is the new uh, European uh, Bauhaus, drawing arts with the science, with the technology, with the artificial intelligence, music, with the uh, uh, quantum computing, uh, biotechnology, and circular economy, are all topics that must work together to uh, encourage a broad participation of citizens, to improvement skills, to improvement vision. Of course, this means that we, want, we must uh, involve local networks of industries, of labs, of cultural institutions, research institutions. Um, as we can read in the um, uh, communication adopted by the European Commission last uh, uh, September, the new uh, European uh, Bauhaus um, as not a particular fund, but he will, it will um, mobilize a combination of several existing European Union financing instruments uh, with complementary scope, reflect the transdisciplinary of this initiative. So for example, uh, there will be some call, uh, <coughs> sorry, of Horizon Europe that will be dedicated to the new European Bauhaus. Uh, the same for the single market program, uh, for a live program, and of course, uh, with the European Region Development uh, Fund. So member states will be invited to introduce the new European Bauhaus in their socio-economic and territorial strategies, as well as to mobilize the relevant parts of the uh, recovery fund. But the new European uh, Bauhaus is just the last initiative of the European Union fostering the role of culture and creativity as a driver of, uh, of development. Europe, uh, the Europe, European Union has been betting on cultural since 1985, year in which the European capital of culture was established, inviting cities to adopt cultural-led urban regen regeneration and development plan, and believing that culture can be advocated as a tool for uh, determining a city identity, regenerating the genius loci and um, progress. Today, uh, today, we want to um, uh, focus our meeting on analyzing the regeneration potential and assessing the long-term cultural legacy of hosting an European capital of culture, as well as uh, the multiply uh, impacts that uh, this type of um, uh, program has in the city. Uh, so today we want to present one 
of this uh, example, thanks to our friend of uh, uh, cultural and creative uh, uh, cluster of uh, Hungary, uh, we want to uh, uh, present the experience of PEX, European Capital of Culture in 2010. A city that uh, aimed to use this opportunity, this program, the European Capital of Cultural uh, Program, to restructure its local uh, economy from a former industrial base to a new cultural base uh, approach. So we have invited uh, Janos Keresnei, president, and um, Eva Kovacs, board member of the cluster, of the creative industry cluster in uh, Hungary, to tell us uh, their experience, uh, highlighting lights, but also shadows of the investments made for the implementation of the plan. Uh, this is very important because uh, as a uh, my Elena said before, uh, we, uh, in our partnership, we have the municipality of Nova um, Gorica and the municipality of uh, Gorizia that will host the uh, next European capital of culture. So your presentation is very important for uh, the work uh, group uh, uh, that today is here. So um, Janos and Eva, please, I leave the floor to you. Thank you very much and uh, good afternoon to everyone. I don't know whether Eva will be with us or not, because I heard now she's coming back, yes, but uh, she has some uh, uh, access problems, so I don't know whether she can stay with us or not. But anyway, I will talk about the, the results. Uh, we run the cultural industry cluster from 2007, which is uh, the 15th year of, of that, and that time the cultural uh, creative industry was a blasphemy. Eva is here. Hello, Eva. You are muted. Hello, everybody. Hi, Eva. Hello. So uh, we run this cluster for 15 years and uh, experienced uh, the development of the culture, uh, the European capital of culture. So we can call it eco as I, I believe. So uh, and we had some experience with that, but having a, the, the shining part, uh, let me introduce the events with a short video. If you don't mind it, I try to share my screen as a video. It is possible as I learned. And yes, it comes. That was that. I hope you get some mood. It it had uh, actually mixed feelings, and uh, we we cannot watch it as a, a black and white uh, phenomenon. And uh, of of course, there were huge expectations before the project started, and after that, there was uh, some. There were some sobering elements, so we will see the result. We prepared the short presentation and we will discuss about uh, that. Let me introduce you the, let us introduce you the results, so the positive results of uh, the in investments. Yeah, it comes like that. But, um, so, starts with that. There was uh, 
there was a, a survey conducted by Laszlo Kakai professor. And as you can see, that was among uh, young people, uh, almost 400, one year before the uh, event. I don't know whether you can see the details clearly. It is readable, Cincia. Yes, yes, Jano, we, we read clearly. Everything is clear. Yeah, that's good. So the it is listed in in uh, the the importance of the mentions. So what what was your first thought about the ECAC? What was their first idea? What they expected one year before the event? It was in two thousand ten, and we were together with Istanbul and Essen. Uh, the program for you that was that was the first they will have a party so they said okay we we expect a party but on the second place they mentioned new workplaces in uh, they 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 waited some new era of creativity uh, we will see whether it happened or not the renovation of the institutes it, we call it institute it is not the it is physical institute so uh, actually uh, places where cultural institutes are, or cultural organizations are. So it was hard to translate how it means institute in Hungary. And so that it is a, mostly is a um, house of youth and a house of music, house of uh, events and such places. So they, they expected some renovation. Everyone expected the highway, the highway arrived. So we got a highway from Budapest within two years, which was really good. Actually, it is it is not a question either in uh, in Gorica or Nova Gorica, Gorizia and Nova Gorica. So that's uh, it's not a question at your place. But uh, new institutes for culture, they believe there will be some uh, renewal of the cultural uh, structure of the city. Uh, they believe that the local culture will be promoted well. And also they believe that the old buildings will be reconstructed in the, in the city, not just the cultural buildings, but iconic, iconic buildings could be reconstructed or renovated. Uh, many of them mentioned that there were districts or quarters of the city which were a little bit more deployed or more or less more abandoned and they they believe that there will be some rehabilitation of those districts it partly happened uh, the promotion of the regional culture which is much bigger than uh, the city culture our city uh, uh, may, maybe i forgot to mention that but our city is 140000 inhabitants and uh, we can call it city because it was city during the Roman time as well. For you Italian friends, it is nothing but uh, out of Italy it comes. And then, uh, then also uh, some kind of uh, European regulation, what kind of uh, uh, settlement could be called city and what kind of could be called town. But those are the cities who were cities during the Roman time. Page was a city and part of the world heritage because we have uh, uh, um, early Christian uh, burial uh, chambers and actually a cemetery. So uh, introducing the minorities was not so interesting for, for the youngs. And as you can see, those, those questions uh, even contained what they think, whether it will be a failure or not. And they said, no, no, it, just 4% said, no, it will be a total failure. So that's uh, and also only one person mentioned that it should not be in our city page. I try to move forward, but there is a question. Yeah, uh, I, we would separate it for infrastructural development and structural development, this creative uh, industry structural development. Concerning the infrastructural development, uh, we, we selected those, uh, these are the main pictures. First, it was the Journal Cultural Quarter. 
it is not a market. It is a real, uh, real photo of that. The Jorona discrete. It was a ceramic factory. At the left side of the uh, of the picture, you can see the the remaining part of that. But the whole place was uh, a ceramic factory, and now it become a cultural district with uh, amazing museums or this. This is the, the music faculty of the University of Art, and this is also the ceramic faculty, and also the graphics and uh, sociology is there. So there are many different places, even a, a working full puppet theater is uh, working there. The only problem was it, it was ready after one year after the ECOC. So that was a big late. Uh, during the ECOC, it couldn't, couldn't work at all. So it was under digging and construction, so you couldn't, couldn't visit it. One year later, it happened. Actually, it is beautiful. And uh, as, uh, as buildings and in, uh, infrastructure development, very well uh, happened. The only problem, when they built it, they the the local politicians and the, and even the national politicians complained where is the creative industry actually any time where we met in uh, public places they said oh janos we don't believe that the creative industry has a power because we built this um, infrastructure and you never use that yes it is true no creative, uh, um, creative company or no creative enterprise settled there. There were two reasons. We were never asked what should we build there. No creative enterprise was involved to the development plans. And this part actually is still empty because there were no discussion how to how to renovate it and how to use it and it is under a monumental protection so you cannot change even a brick inside secondly it was overbuilt if i can say that so it becomes so beautiful you cannot put even a needle to the wall and the creative company they need a creative environment indeed so nowadays there is uh, in this part there is uh, a uk company not a local one a uk company who is building markets of uh, racing cars and airplanes and this small part there is a, a glove manufacturing company which is also not from our city because the prices of renting are too high for our small market. So, uh, moving forward, that was the most successful uh, investment. The whole city needed that. That is a 1,000 uh, person audience Philharmon, uh, music hall. And there uh, our almost 200 years old Philharmonic Orchestra is a resident company there so it is really uh, useful and uh, successful development and it runs very well most more than 60 percent of uh, of utilization of the time and maybe it after after the pandemics of course it could go uh, could go higher so the building is beautiful the the features and the acoustic of the place and the technology and the techniques which are uh, implemented there are satisfy satisfying. This is a few, it is a full success because we have a Philharmonic Orchestra who, who runs uh, its own program inside, but they are only residents and other prog programs are welcome as well. So this place is uh, is an uh, uh, inclusive venue as we could say that and it works quite well 
This one is a, a library called Knowledge Center where they collected all the libraries from the city and they merged into one place merged also from the university from the city from the county all the libraries are in one place and called the uh, knowledge center and also uh, university lectures and some other events are there it became it became to its function. So what was planned there, it happened and everyone is very satisfied with that. And this was the most popular part, actually, of the infrastructure development. That was the streets and squares. This is the iconic main square at the left side. This is iconic main square of uh, our city which become renewed and looks like this and everyone is uh, satisfied although there were huge uh, discussions and debates before the development has started and down you can see an exciting uh, uh, performance a croatian land artist made it with only one uh, one tool when you collect i don't know the name in english <laughs> when you collect the uh, the leaves uh, in autumn and with one tool he made it in one day this one uh, this piece of art so that's a collaboration between osiak and page it's made out of uh, it's made out of uh, leaves yes fallen leaves uh, so we had many streets and squares renewed and that was very popular so one part of the expectation uh, already um, satisfied uh, this is the darker part of it the cut in the industry structural development it is different uh, once when we complained about uh, the ECOC events we say the only problem you made this beautiful infrastructure development what we you almost did nothing for the creative industry structural development actually we get a new institute which is the journal management i would say it's a holding because the kodai center the heritage places uh, the journal district everything is merged to one huge uh, institute but it works by nowadays by nowadays after 12 years it started to work properly uh, i'm sorry for the typo the national institutes it's it was an in interesting and i think quite positive development of the ecoc five years after the ECOC, the local government could reach that the Panon Philharmonics and the Journey district could be part of the national culture. Uh, maybe it's only a Hungarian specialty, but if an institute become part of the national culture, then the national, go uh, the national government should support it. It is compulsory. So, it was a big question because uh, the Panon Philharmonics and the Journey districts would not leave and couldn't be sustainable by the local government. There are many political aspects of that because of the, uh, the budget and the incomes of a local government and what are the parts of the creative uh, industry elements of the local budget and the local GDP and it 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 leads very very far but uh, once we don't have a business model locally which could harvest the the benefits of the creative industry then in once one part the subsidies goes to the uh, creative industry organizations and the benefits from the creative industry would never return to the count uh, to the to the city so it was crucial to involve the national uh, money into the sustainable management and it succeed so the situation is not the worst not the best 
because of the pandemic events and everything. But as you understand, establishing the whole business model after the ECOG is much harder than before the ECOG. They had never done it. That was the problem. Running after our money, once we established the organization, once we established new institutes, once we established uh, new buildings and uh, places which uh, should maintain somehow, it's much harder than uh, planning it in advance. Of course, it were, there was a lot of businessmen developed for, for incomes and there were exciting ideas how many visitors will come to page and then it will be a, a center of uh, the tourism but it never happened never ever 10 years later on with a more uh, dynamic uh, marketing uh, management of the city it starts it starts only now so only the ecoc did not make too much noise around us. Maybe because of these failures. No creative center being established. New galleries became. And no creative hub, no fab lab. Only one international creative event happened a few years later, uh, which was the Europe Cantat no new cluster members we could uh, we could invite in the in those years and no investment to creative enterprises happened everything was established by local government money and uh, national government money but not business was established during that and for my biggest regret we have never become the ecbn members <laughs> That's hopefully the will. Although, although even I personally uh, participated in the establishment at ECBN. Uh, let's see the scientific results. Eva, and actually me as well, participated in, uh, uh, in um, evaluation and anal analyzation uh, study and which was conducted by Ilona Palne Kovac and uh, the title of that is uh, page as European capital of culture in 2010 trapped in multi-level governance and just two slides comes from that because we are limited in time I don't want to take your time too long uh, what happened in page with, between 2006 and 10. So the announcement uh, about our, our winning was about 2006. And uh, as being in crisis, it was the only chance for the city and everyone wanted to grab and huge expectations were there. Actually, it was a local initiation bar series one uh, teacher at the university started that. So later on, he was not in the, in the committees. He was completely uh, excluded from the, from the whole process. Josef Tokac, just for, for the history, I would like to mention his name. He wrote the application book for, for the ECOC. And later he couldn't participate in, uh, in the implementation. He's, he was invited in the beginning. He was the head of that in 2006, but by 2007, he wasn't there. Uh, actually, there was a fair competition. Many Hungarian cities uh, competed, even Budapest, because they couldn't, they couldn't imagine uh, uh, that something else could be a, a capital, not just them. <laughs> but I think it is familiar to everyone with regions. So, uh, but really the best bid one. And there was a huge fighting for money. Since the European capital of culture is not supported by the European Union, it is very small money what they give to that. They give the title and they give the attention and of course the European environment, but they don't give money. 
the, once the city decides what will be the development, then they have to find some money for that from different uh, resources. Uh, of course, when the money comes, the politics also uh, intervene. So what happened first? The civils excluded by local politicians. That means the multi-level governance. It should have been the different way, but in our case, it happened uh, in uh, the opposite way. So it should be a, a bottom-up governance, not a top-down governance. So instead of, it started as a bottom-up governance, but once the money applied and then uh, the money, the request for the money, it, it, it wasn't, actually, it, it was not about corruption, do not, I don't, I don't mean it. It was about the, the money raising and the resource raising, and it was too complicated. And of course, the central, the central government always wanted to keep the money under control. And uh, as we say in Hungary, they never give money to the countryside without commissars. So they need some supervisor. And once the supervisor apply, they know anything about the locals. Me personally, at least three, four times in being introduced to the new leadership of the, of the program. So at least three times it was changed deeply. Uh, so the civils excluded by local politicians and the locals became excluded by the central government. And finally, Page only was the venue of the programs, the organizer and supporters, um, financial supporters were from Budapest. So the locals excluded by central government. So finally, there were some opinions about the program year. The modest jamboree in 2010 plus huge investments. And 2011, that was the hangover and a new crisis started. And by now we can enjoy the, the development of ECOC and we can see uh, the benefits of that slow, slowly, slowly. And about ECOC, that would be my last, uh, last slide. Uh, what are the conclusions? It is also comes from this study. So the three levels of governance, the civils, the locals and the nationals, we actually we don't have region. In your cases, the regional government is a, it's another level. So they were no partner, they were not partners. Because I personally participated in the development, for me it was all very clear it was always about the money no professional questions raised always who give the money and who want to control the spendings the national government and the public sector dominated the game the vertical dependency made the local alliances impossible and that's true finally we were completely excluded and it was really bad feeling personally to those people who, who participated in the cultural life of the city. And we said to the, to the managers at the end that we congratulate to the, the program idea. It was in 2009 when we said that uh, the only problem is that's why Page could become uh, an ECOC, it was due to our job before that. Due to the, the institute leaders, due to the artistic leaders, due to the creative industry developers, because there was a thriving cultural life of the city and we did it before them. And once they arrived, it was already existed. So it's changed a lot, but finally, 10 years later, later recovered almost 100%. <laughs> so the structure of the existing uh, creative industry and the structure of the existing cultural life almost being destroyed. 
by uh, the ECOG. Sorry for saying that. And I just say that because uh, I always, I, I told that many places, I told it in Matera, I also told it in, uh, in um, um, okay, I, I forgot the name of the city where I was there when they made the bill. But, so the, uh, the government political culture limited to the cooperation with civils, as I said, the general scheme of ECC does not fit everywhere. So the general scheme of ECOC mm -hmm. does not fit everywhere, which means more flexible EU regu regulations uh, versus more strict control of the implementation, which it's a big question. Many times it was a reference for the EU regulation. It is impossible to do that because the EU regulation of the money says that, and you cannot spend for that. So that's not always, it was always a problem. So in both cases, whether it's EU regulation, regulation or uh, strict control, the more European influence and more local learning is expected. It could be a good conclusion. So uh, thank you very much for, uh, for interesting about the ECOC results and experience. And I would stop share and we can discuss about this question. And after that, if you want about to talk about value chains, I'm ready for that, but I'm afraid I use my time. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Janos. Uh, yes, uh, now we uh, involve also the other speaker and then uh, we will we can uh, have a question and answer uh, time. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Janos. And uh, in Vera, I think that uh, uh, you um, highlight some very key uh, elements uh, to debate, uh, to reflect uh, many lessons uh, about the condition that uh, need to be in place for the success of this type of large scale uh, uh, intervention. So I think that uh, um, in the second part of the, the workshop, we could uh, uh, analyze in depth um, some, some, some elements if, if uh, of course we uh, uh, have some question about, uh, about it. Now, uh, um, it is not just only the Europe that uh, promote culture-led uh, city development. For example, it is the case of the UNESCO that uh, created in uh, 2004, the UNESCO Creative City Network, a huge uh, international uh, laboratory of uh, ideas and uh, experiments to promote uh, cooperation with and uh, um, with the, the among uh, cities that have identified uh, the creativity as a strategic factor for uh, sustainable urban development. Uh, so uh, Bologna is one of the Italian uh, city members of this uh, network. And we have invited uh, Valentina Lanza head of the culture and, and music office of municipality of Bologna to share with us the experience, try to uh, understand if uh, a big member of this type of network could be also an opportunity for uh, cities. So Valentina Lanza, the floor is yours. Hello. Hello, thank you very much for the invitation. I try to share the, the screen. It is always a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, the organizer disabilities, the condivision of the screen. Daniela, good I <laughs> Try again, please. Yeah, now it's working. Hello? 
My name is Valentina Lanza and I work for the Culture and Creativity Division at the Creativity and Industry and Music Office in the city of Bologna. I will talk to you about uh, Bologna UNESCO Creative City of Music. Bologna is a creative city of music since 2006, has first Italian cities. The title is based on the rich music tradition and on the other side, on the contemporary music scene. The music tradition is well represented by the music institution of the city, Accademia Filarmonica, Teatro Comunale, that is the opera house of the city, the Music Conservatory, that is uh, named with, uh, by the teacher of Mozart, Mr. Padre Martini, the University of Bologna with the Art, Music and Show Department, the International Museum and the Library of Music, and the Tagliadini's collection, that is a, a collection of uh, historical musical instruments. In Bologna, there are a lot of signs of the presence uh, of the music tradition. The, uh, we have a lot of, we, we feel the presence of the important composer of the past, like Mozart, Wagner, Rossini, Donizetti, Verdi, Respighi. But uh, as I told you before, the, the title of uh, Creative City of Music has been given to Bologna also for the lively contemporary music scene, not also for the tradition. Uh, you can see here an image that represents the calendar of uh, the live music, the, the concert, in a regular day in a pre-pandemic period. As you can see, we have a lot of music act in very different kind of music. And um, this is a, a particularity of Bologna because we are not a city so big to have all this offer of music. The title of Creative City of Music was a sign for the importance of music in the society of the city even though Bologna is not a capital of the musical industry, as well as Milan, for example. The importance of music in society is uh, well represented, um, looking at uh, how many people are involved in music in, di in different fields. We have, we have uh, a lot of... Uh, um, schools of music, a lot of uh, independent music label, a lot of organization that deal with event, a lot of radio programming and a lot of venues. So a lot of people involved in the management of venues and technician and other kind of uh, profession. For dealing with the, all these areas, different areas, in 2018, the city of Bologna established the brand new creative industry and music office. That is where I work. And this is uh, the first case in, um, in Italy that uh, public administration um, set an office dedicated to music. But being part of a UNESCO Creative City Network it is not an end in itself. It takes a lot of benefits to the, to the city. In particular, it allows the city to activate international exchanges. Next week, for example, we, have, uh, we host an, um, a cooperation project that involved um, an, an ensemble from Hanover, another creative city of music, and ensemble based in Bologna. And all together, they will perform a new music production, original production. 
being part of UNESCO Creative City Network also stimulate the growth of local music production to the confrontation with other cities, promote the local music sector at uh, an international level, facilitate the widest access to, mu to the music art expression and to the most innovative culture phenomena. The, the UNESCO Creative City Network is a platform where discussed about the different action of cultural policy. This is uh, very, very evident uh, during the um, pandemic period when we had the possibility to talk uh, with the uh, other city and to speak about the best practice uh, and case histories uh, for uh, reacting uh, to the emergency situation. As you can, uh, can easily understand, that the title is also a powerful brand for cultural city promotion. I like also to, to speak about, uh, to tell you about uh, an example of cultural policy related to Bologna Creativity, uh, Creativity City of Music, La Sala della Musica, that means uh, all of music. Sala della Musica is an area dedicated to the popular music in Bologna since 1914. As you uh, have seen before, when I show you the slide with the music institution, all that institution regard the past, the tradition. This uh, is a project that want to fill the gap and to complete the map of the music institution of the city with the segment dedicated to the popular music. It opened last year at the second floor of the main library of the city, in the heart of the city, in the city center. Here you can find an, an introduction by the, the scientific director of Sala della Musica, Gianni Sibilla, that is a university tutor and journalist. And he speaks about uh, the fact that uh, Sala della Musica is the first permanent exhibition in an Italian city dedicated to the history of popular music. And uh, it is um, an original project and uh, I show you some photo. This is a view of Sala della Musica. Uh, these uh, triangular structure are dedicated each uh, to one decade from 1914. Instead, the uh, circular uh, structure is dedicated to the playlist of the period. If you want to go deeper with this uh, argument uh, or with the city of music in general, you can go also on our website, that is cittadellamusica.comune.bologna.it and you can find our contact, email, Facebook and Instagram. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Valentina. So UNESCO Creative City Network as uh, a placing um, we, we could we could say that uh, it aims to some common uh, objective uh, as a placing creativity creativity and cultural industries at the heart of the development of a, a city and uh, be part uh, of a community to uh, cooperate uh, at international uh, uh, level. Um, a great opportunity for the cities to establish uh, relationship, uh, share project uh, and enhance uh, the, the sector, the creative industry sector. So if a city wants to embrace a vision and strengthen the role of cultural creative industry for the local uh, development maybe should reflect about uh, the um, opportunity to become a member of, uh, of, this, uh, of this network. Well, 
uh, the presentation uh, are uh, finished. So uh, now I would want to uh, open a debate. So a question and answer, uh, uh, it is a question and answer time. So uh, if you have a, a question, uh, please um, uh, write it on chat and then we uh, we can discuss the uh, the question that you uh, that you pose uh, i have a question uh, for uh, for janos janos uh, we uh, we have started to, to work together and we always highlight our uh, attention on the value chain of the cultural uh, cultural industry but what does mean the value chain of a cultural and creative uh, industries for a city Ooh. <laughs> actually <laughs> this is one of my favorite topic because uh, when you you are dealing with creative industry development it sounds nice but uh, first when we established our cluster we made a cadastra of uh, the creative enterprises in our metropolitan area, which was around 1 million people, what we, uh, um, what we checked, what kind of creative industry enterprises are there. And uh, because of the education of the university was strong in architecture and architecture art, so, we had 700 architecture companies in that region, which was a surprise for us. Everyone thought the theaters or the ballet or, or such kind of video making, because that was also strong. So first of all, we made a map, what kind of uh, uh, branches or sectors of the creative industry are present in our places. And it was not enough we still couldn't develop very well because, okay, we understood we had 700 architects and what? What will happen? We, everyone knew that they are too much. So that's, that's too many, many of, half of them didn't work exactly well. So that's, we, we didn't recognize what is the problem. And then later on, because we are participating in many cluster organizations, uh, we just learned the clusterization and economic development and ecosystem development should be based on the value chains. I'm talking about the Porter value chain. I believe many of you are is, uh, is familiar with uh, his value chain, but those value chains are sometimes not relevant for the creative industry branches. Once we believe that, uh, you know, the inbound logistic, the product and the outbound production and the outbound logistics as a core value and the marketing and after that, the dissemination is, is not the same somehow. Luckily, the European Union has uh, established, uh, I'm just trying to find, uh, because maybe I can show uh, a picture uh, of... Uh, the creative industry value chain. Yes, it is. So they asked the KEA, the Kerner, uh, the Kerner agency, and somehow we made they made a stylist value chain. For example, for film, they there is a study where all the value chain that they elaborated value chain models they elaborated is uh, possible to find and why would it be interesting because once you you analyze this value chain and understand how it works there is a core function so when the value from the beginning is transferring and more added value goes to that and by the end it reaches the uh, the consumers where are the intervention play? Where are the places for intervention? And uh, could you see me? Yes, no, it was a... Yes, Janos. Yes. So where are the places where weaker, weaker points are or bottlenecks are in the process? And then you, you know where to 
were to have with education, with technology development, or uh, connections, or international connections, or where to find some EU support for that. And also, the supporting functions would be present in the region. So once you analyze of every value chains of your activities or main activities, as you, as you learn now from uh, Valentina that uh, the music is dominant in Bologna, actually in our city also, but our, in our city, the contemporary music is also the best, the, the best bands from Hungary are in from Page. The best are from Page, not from Budapest. It's exciting. And uh, we still couldn't do enough for that. So once you find where are the where are the weakest points, then you can intervene and you can help them, and then how the ecosystem could be elaborated. Yes, thank you, um, Janos. I think that all the regional cluster, all the regional government, all the stakeholders uh, that want to work in this uh, uh, sector and this field must have this approach to uh, analyze uh, the, the, our productive sector. Also to, uh, to feel like a productive and economic uh, sector. Because just only if you uh, if you have analyzed all the phases, the market, the consumer, the production phase, the distribution phase, the research and prototyping phase, you could uh, feel as an inter in a, as a, a really enterprises and uh, productive sector. So I uh, perfectly agree uh, with you. Uh, so Janos, for you, there is a question by Elena. Elena, do you want to, to ask directly to Janos? Yes, thank you. Uh, Janos, I was wondering if uh, uh, after uh, Knowing the, the successful uh, winning of the European Capital of Culture in 2006, you started thinking, uh, uh, having in mind the legacy you wanted to leave to the city after 2010. Yes, of course, it was. It was. Uh, I, I wouldn't say not. So everyone wanted to, to build a legacy and uh, make 2010 uh, as, a, as, a, as a memory and as of course as a legacy and it remained because the infrastructural developments uh, has uh, has built a new new uh, legacy and new part of the city and actually the city itself because of the streets and squares uh, program the city itself has been changed if we consider as built heritage and as a cultural heritage, not too much. Actually, the Zolnay district, I think this became uh, um, a legacy. We can talk about that after 12 years. So that's maybe that part become. Is it okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, other question? There are other questions. I don't know if our partner of uh, municipality of Nova Goriza wanted to address some question or other. No, everything. Uh, it's clear. I told a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and Valentina was so clear. So you, you give you give uh, you give us a very great uh, lesson about uh, uh, the, the approach about the governance. I think that one of the uh, most important, uh, uh, one of the key elements of success uh, of this type of uh, um, 
investment is uh, to, to be uh, an efficient governance, multiply uh, governance involving uh, uh, with a bottom-up approach and non, uh, and non uh, up down uh, approach. So uh, I think that uh, uh, maybe for the policymaker, this is a, a great challenge. It is a great challenge not to uh, to have a decision process uh, centralized, but uh, to share, to discuss, to plan with the uh, the, the the group of the, the stakeholders. Janos, do you want to only speak? one thing? Uh, there was a very creative part of the preparation in two thousand eight. There was uh, an art council organized by local stakeholders and we were there and there was an application. We get more than 400, more than 400 program proposal from, from civil society, exactly only from the, the city civil society and some surrounding places also accepted the uh, um, access there. And that was the most beautiful part when we made the, the evaluation. It lasted almost one month. And the, the best thing was the principles, what we set up. Unfortunately, they, it became destroyed later on. But the, on that part, it sounds very well because there were exciting things. For example, uh, the... The one of the main principle was that the local actors should be uh, involved in any program. So we never supported that those programs where local actors were not involved. We also considered the large event as a money pump. So what happens if the U2 make a concert in your city? It's, it's really good. Make you famous for a week considering maybe half a year, but they drain all the money out of uh, the local uh, resources. And those money could be more efficiently spent in, uh, in local places because the, the cities who are participating in ECOG, they are not, actually they are not real capital. So their resources are very limited. So once you spend all the cultural resources for one large event and it runs out, then it doesn't make too much sense. Placido Domingo started, uh, actually Placido, that was a good idea. Placido Domingo started Operalia in our city. And that was a, that was a beautiful uh, uh, event, although, but there was a system behind. There was an educational system. There was a workshop system behind. And after that, it lasted at least one or two years, but unfortunately it uh, turned out something else. No, it become, uh, from that it become the, um, the that's a TV series uh, from, uh, from Visegrad countries that's, uh, the genius or something so the talent the most talented person i don't remember the exact word for musicians and they found beautiful musicians young musicians but originally there was the operalia which was organized there and that was a continuous locally involved uh, uh series event and then it was really good and uh, it was very well supported In fact, that of the financial sustainability, it is maybe the, the, the problem of the problem, the, 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 the greatest challenge for, uh, for the city. In fact, you, you said fighting for <laughs> fi uh, find uh, money. And I think that uh, it is the most important problem that uh, a city that uh, wants to invest in this type of uh, um, of field uh, um, of this cultural-led uh, process uh, of development must, uh, uh, must fight because uh, it, cultural, it is not a, uh, so, uh, how to say, uh, uh, able to uh, generate uh, uh, a lot of money. 
cultural need the public uh, support uh, could be just only self finance so uh, it is it is a, a, an important uh, uh, issue to understand how to uh, become financial uh, how to reach the uh, financial sustainability of this uh, this process please uh, janos if no one else wants to take just uh, so if no one else wants to contribute uh, to this i would say a little bit different uh, a year ago i was an auditor because actually personally i'm dealing with uh, intangible asset management which is a specific way of uh, of the copyright utilization and i was working for uh, a puppet theater so also the i say it because also the actors of the cultural life they have to change their mind and even with our theater it's really hard to reach that they should change their mind and their mindset because i agree with you of course the, the, the high culture also needs support but there are possibilities and the pandemics uh, taught us how to utilize those who are a little bit creative they could utilize better also even the online presence but uh, the puppet theater just for a very clear example of the value chain for the puppet theater they need puppets which is a piece of design they need puppet plans they need customs they need stories they need music they need uh, uh, set design and you can use that in uh, in a performance but i asked them because they had many uh, financial problems i asked them whether you utilize the music did you use your music for children and have you set a playlist on the on the uh, spotify from your most favorite shows no we never thought that or have you published a, a drawing book for the children from your favorite uh, uh, puppet plans? Because it is already drawn. So you have drawings, you have pictures. So you have a lot of gems in your hand, but you put them together to make a beautiful show. It, we should change the mind and utilize the intangible asset produced by uh, creativity and using in popular uh, places and the puppet theater it's a it's a proper place for that because children are open and they always want would like to continue the story so this is the transmedia storytelling it's completely new for them and unknown although the transmedia storytelling is technically available it's just question of the just question of the mindset i i perfectly agree i agree with you uh, we must uh, uh, we must reach new frontier new neighbor we must uh, go oh, further <laughs> okay so i don't know if there are other questions from uh, other participant or if we can stop here our workshop i think so elena what do you think well i think that valentina presented every every component uh, of uh, the experience so everything was quite clear uh, so thank you so much janos and valentina for uh, uh, for you being with us today. Uh, I think, Cinzia, yes, that we can close our workshop uh, 
Okay. I don't yeah. see any questions. I think that a lot of lessons today <laughs> yes. from both the from both the the cases. So uh, thank you to uh, Janos and thank you to Valentina. Of course, I think that we come back uh, to you um, because I think that uh, uh, we could. Uh, uh, could stay in touch for uh, other um, topic to uh, to analyze in uh, in the future and maybe also for a future project. Well, I want to uh, thank you uh, all uh, of the participants. I want to remember that uh, uh, the next uh, uh, 15th of March, we have the la our last workshop. In this case, the focus will not be uh, the role of cultural and creative uh, uh, industries in the urban uh, development, but we analyze opportunity and measure to support cultural and creative uh, industries. We have uh, involved, <coughs> sorry, today it is not a good uh, good day for my voice. So um, uh, we have involved the representative of the OECD and of uh, Cultural Action Europe. And with them, uh, we will uh, uh, try to analyze all, uh, give an overview uh, about the uh, measure to support the cultural and creative uh, enterprises. Okay, so uh, thank you to uh, everybody and uh, see you the next 15th of March. Thank you, Janos. Thank you, Valentina. Thank you very much. Thank you thank for you the invitation. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.